Alright guys, welcome back. Uh, so we still have Dara with us in this episode. So we are going to talk about the other part of uh, her data scientist career. Okay. So first of all, let's get let's get technical. Yeah. What are some of the data skills that you think is important to have? Okay. Um, critical thinking. Okay. Math. I would say if you're going deeper. Mm. Um, Basic understanding of data structures, all the data yeah. uh, engineering parts, like I would say SQL, MySQL, if it comes to tools. Yeah. And then uh, if it comes to programming languages, like basically Python and with Jupyter. Yes. Okay, so so there are a couple of questions here that they, mm. they want to know. I mean, obviously they hear a lot from me. Python and R, which one is your choice? Python. <laughs> okay, reason. Um, I would say when you're learning, it's more spread, so you can find any answer with Whereas with R, it's like harder to yeah. find. Yeah. Okay, so uh, yeah, basically you got more stack overflow threads yes. on, <laughs> on Python, right? Yes. Yeah, the R user group and the news group saw like yeah. relatively quite. Yeah, I'm sorry, yeah. R group. <laughs> okay, I didn't say that. Okay, now uh, the main reason is it partly also because you have a software engineering background, so it's easier to understand. Kind of true. Kind of true, right? Yeah, okay. because I've, do, I've been doing some programs on Python as well. Yeah, okay, so the second thing is uh, Max is important we sort of hear a lot of different versions like yeah, yeah. but you don't really need to know maths to begin learning yes, data science right true. but towards the uh, at what stage of your career you mm. realize that okay this is something that i really need to have some solid understanding on yeah. maths which part Agree. which which part uh probability probability yeah, yeah um I mean, I'm going through this advanced machine learning course right now, and I see a lot of math there. That's what uh, I'm yeah. saying. Yeah. But when 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 it comes to the math, it's probably the notations that we are yes. not so used to it, right? Yes. And because then the, we used to write algorithms. Then the logarithm, all the sinus, cosinus, yeah. it's all 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 over the places in yeah, the Okay. Science. So that's more on the trigonometry yes, part. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Trigonometry. But uh, is calculus, exponential, natural? Yeah. Yeah. yeah those yeah. are those are equally that's important. A, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And. Uh, what else? Oh yeah, so uh, data engineering and then say things like SQL. We we know that it's important because yep. we we came from full stack background. Yep. But how is that important to a data scientist? Well, it's important for them to like uh, let's say they just get the data set, but they need some tool to like visualize the data to mm. get the uh, understanding of how it's structured or how yeah. it's been like you know the the all the missing parts how they should fill in on all the you know the null value values yeah. that they have to fill in so sql could help could come handy with it yeah, yeah. okay okay so you got your answers <laughs> yeah all right so uh number uh, next question which tool should uh, beginning data scientists use i mean when they move on to the uh, intermediate usually intermediate we we have the ability to self-learn using different packages and we sort of know that if this one is well documented, actively updated, we'll pick those packages, mm. right? But as a, as a beginner, right, what would you recommend those sort of tools that they should start playing around or exploring? Okay, um, as a beginner, I would say definitely Jupyter, Jupyter. with Python. With Python, yeah. okay, Jupyter Notebook. Uh, then I think another thing is like SQL, MySQL, or any mm. other like database systems that they can come in handy. But I think SQL is very well documented, so they can go ahead with that. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess like a few basic modelings. Mm. So Linear regression, yeah, logistic regression. Logistic regression, all that. Yeah. Yeah. And that comes with the Anaconda package with yes, Jupyter Notebook. Yes, Anaconda package, yeah. yeah. Okay, that's good. Uh, here's an interesting one. Now, we saw that even though you are a data scientist, but you still attend and won many hackathons, all right? So this is the part that they all want to know. So tell us more about the projects and some of uh, some of the secrets, tips that you, you can share, all right? So that uh, for people who are looking to participate in hackathons. Mm, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I did come up with some sort of results of my participation rate. I'm still low in wins than lose, so <laughs> it's not all about winning. <laughs> But uh, basically, I would say that hackathons really help you in a sense that they give you like the exposure of uh, 24 hours nonstop. You yeah. try to code and come up with some certain results. And uh, in I think last 
two or three that I won, I used, uh, I was mainly portrayed as a data scientist. Yeah. So yeah, I've been using quite a number of tools and thankfully we did win that. So I think the last one was about NASA yeah. App Challenge. Yeah, the first place we won, we used convolutional neural networks to get the uh, picture of the image of the Earth and yeah. then get, go through the CNN to uh, get it through the artistic form. So basically you get like a Picasso art style into the Earth image. So you get the artistic form of the Earth of the Earth yeah. using uh, CNN. Yeah. So our our message there was to about the pollution. Ah, so they will get okay. the image with the polluted, and then they will get the actual image. So it's like you know spreading the awareness of them on the merchandise, like T-shirts or anything. Yeah. Yeah. Like that. Okay. Okay. That's cool. Mm. And um, what I think for to me, right? Hackathon is about optimizing optimizing your learning, your skills. And yeah, you use it best. Use them in twenty four hours. Is that right to say so? Yeah. <laughs> of course, optimizing your your sleeping, right? Yeah. With the least amount of sleep that to do the the, the, the most, most work, yeah. right? And with the least lines of code, yeah. then you can you can deliver the best result. That's true. Yeah, and then even the most of the hackathons, I think the presentation also they don't give you like they give you a fixed number of minutes, uh, three minutes. Yes. Yeah. So you have to make sure that you optimize your your storytelling skills within three minutes. You get to. Ask Express the problem mm. and then show your solution and yeah. then how your solution can help yep. you solve the problem. Yep. Yeah, all in three minutes yeah, mm. usually. Okay, now here is some uh, philosophical question. All right, uh, Dara, if you were to be able to travel back in time, okay, with with you as a data scientist, we both believe that in quantum computing, this will be happening in the near future. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> okay, what what would you tell your the, the younger version of Dara that you, when you are learning and practicing to become a data scientist? Mm. Uh, <laughs> philosophical question. Yeah. Well, I would say don't stop. Don't stop. Yeah, okay. don't but you are, you are still not stopping. Yeah, I mean, uh, at that particular time, so if you if you tell me about the younger stage, I was about to give up, to be honest, a couple of times. After your uni or um, during? It was like a couple of stages. Okay, so, so it happens a few times. A few times, yes. Okay. And the hardest point was when I uh, just graduated from school. Yeah. Yeah, so basically I would say, don't stop, don't listen to what they say. Okay, yeah. but uh, it, on that line, right? So how did you actually overcome those uh, obstacles or the moments that you hesitated? Well, I think it's a big thanks to my mom who was always there to support me. Okay. And another thing is because, I don't know, I was just that eager to prove all of them wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that, that, that's something, right? I, I always believe that for, for someone who achieves something in their life or reach a certain stage, the the reason that, that motivates us is usually very simple, but brutally yeah. simple, right? Brutally simple. Brutally <laughs> simple. It has to be brutally simple. Yep. It, I, it's it's dead, dead simple. You just want to prove that those people are wrong, right? Yeah. It sounds simple and it's, it's, it's brutal, but then it, it just works for you. Yeah. yeah? Okay. It just works. Thanks. Uh, hi, I'm Josh. Uh, I study business analytics and finance from Monash. I took the Data Science 360 course and I actually do like it. It's four days, it's pretty intensive, but they cover sort of the end-to-end -end of what data science is really about. Uh, you get to hear fancy words that I honestly wouldn't have thought about it, uh, like MongoDB and, and learning what Python is about. Because I came from a background of using R only and I know that I, Python was the way for it, like, only because you know some people were talking about it here and there. The uh, course was pretty comprehensive. Uh, it taught me the overview of everything I need to know about uh, and the indus industry practices both locally and globally. Um, and from there, the rest, the rest of it is more of my own effort to sort of discover. So I think that, that that's why Data Science 360 is good. It's because it's, it's exactly what it means, it's 360. We know that you are coming from a software engineering background. Mm. So how is the transition from uh, software engineer to data science? And also you have you must have worked with a lot of different people who are from different backgrounds. So mm. I think our audience uh, would like to know how do you actually transition from yeah, different background to, yeah. to data science? Well, 
At the beginning, I would say it wasn't as hard because it was just the basics understanding. And actually, it was easier for me because I knew the mm, basics yeah. of software engineering. So I think the hardest part comes when it was about like, you know, transitioning from completely different thinking to another different thinking. So okay. it's like different mindsets altogether. Logical thinking yeah, to, to uh, critical, know, thinking. critical thinking. Yeah. Yes, exactly. That was the hardest part, I would say. Okay. And now, uh, any advice for them who are coming from ad other industry, but they, yeah. they try to trans? Well, I would say it's not really the advice, but more of a, like, you know, the push forward. It's yeah. like, if you like it, then do it. If you don't, then just don't do it. Yeah. But don't go for it. It might sound cliche, but I think yeah. it, you have to find out the the passion, your your own passion. Exactly. In in data science first, right? Yeah. It's not so much about finding the passion in a particular career or what, but you find your own passion in 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 data science. Right? Yeah. Why do you like about data? What do you like yeah. about machine and learning? Yeah. And one thing that I truly believe in is the end result. So no matter what tools you are using, as yeah. long as you achieve that end result, it's like totally satisfying. Yeah, we use. Python just because we can get to the end result <laughs> faster yes. by using Google, okay? We broke the yes. secret today, all right? Now, here is another, uh, I think we, we have been talking about uh, different levels from 3,000 feet, uh, I think maybe an, another 10,000 feet. Now, this is a bit of, I would say, 30,000 feet questions, yeah? Are you as a data scientist and you work in an uh, established corporate company, so you, you wouldn't have too much of a problem in terms of getting data, That's true. Uh, getting ground truth, labeled data. So yeah. you, you wouldn't have, you have the, I, I would say that you have the luxury uh, access to those things, right? Yeah. Uh, from there, where, where do you think data science is, is heading? Yeah. Mm. yeah. Not not anything, not just AI or machine learning, but in, in your uh, foreseeable future, where do you think data science is heading? Well, it's already like getting the very good results in terms of like recommendation systems and all the advisory systems. So I think the next step will be more on like um, automating the actual, you know, the, the decision making the process. Decision making yes. process. Yes. So yeah. there are like things that come in handy, like automated tools that they keep releasing every year. Yeah. So I think that will come next. Okay, and yeah. when, when we talk about automation, are we still talking about process automations, right? Yes. Yeah, we are using yes. a lot more refined data exactly. to help them to automate the process. Yeah. yeah. Are you able to tell us something interesting, but uh, you, you can't really disclose much, but in terms of uh, the, the interesting part, the projects, yeah, the most interesting projects that you're working on? Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> let, me, let me check if I can actually talk yeah. about it. Well, actually, there, there is this project that we kind of closed down for now, so I think I can talk about it. Okay. <laughs> it's about um, standout listings. So there is a, a product name that's called Standout Listing in Job Street, which is more about like making the job ads stand out from the others. Yeah. And our job was to identify how much usefulness it brings to the hirers. Ah, okay. Yeah, so we basically got the basic results of like SOL, the previous history, how much it affected the application count, job use, and all that. And then we okay. came up with the results. Yeah, yeah. All right. So for, for those of you who are watching, if you are actively involved uh, and read a lot of tech news in Malaysia, you realize that Dara is not just a data scientist actively participate in hackathons, but she's also very active in terms of uh, community building, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe you can tell us a little bit more about uh, what are the communities that you have been involved in and how does it help you to grow, not just as a data scientist, mm -hmm. right? But you wear different hats. So how does it help you to grow in terms of uh, a tech person or your personal development growth? Yeah, sure. Um, I think community helps a lot in terms of like, you know, you are among your peers. Yep. So it's more of like a family rather than friends already. So yep. whenever you join these events, you feel like you're part of something something big. Very close. Right? Something yeah. very close. Yeah. yeah. And uh, another thing is because I'm really, be I'm really a strong believer of sharing is caring. Yeah, yeah. So I guess whenever I learn something new and whenever I struggle with it, I feel like it could have been all settled way faster if I did this, this and that. So yeah. I feel like sh sharing those knowledge with other people will help them to overcome this faster. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, any uh, so you are involved in uh, GDG, right? Yeah. yeah. Google developers. And how does it differ from, and where's the data science group that you're involved in? Uh, the woman in data science. Women in data yeah. science, right? Yeah. So Just how, recently. how different is it between uh, a tech, like uh, software engineer focus versus 
uh, the data science focus? I would say it's more focused because the DigiKL events are very broad. Mm -hmm. uh, it can come with Angular ending with like web uh, platforms and yeah. all that. So it's not really like focused, whereas data science is pretty much in you know, like one straight line, mm -hmm. which kind of defines more like more understanding and more like strongly grounded people there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So I think that's it for this episode. Once again, thank you very much, Dara, thank for you. being with us. Now, as as usual, right, uh, before we, we end our program, is there any one uh, words or advice that you can give it to our audience so that they can, uh, it helps them to progress in their data science career journey? Okay. Um, I would say never stop, never give up is yeah. one. And another is don't be scared of asking questions. Mm -hmm. I've been through that. It's really, really, really easy to just ask, to just ping your peer and then ask them a question. Yeah. Although it might be very dumb, although it might be very silly, but just go tr raise your hand and just ask. It's yeah. not going to be harm. All right. Okay. Thank you very much. If you have any questions for myself and Dara, feel free to leave it in the comment. And as usual, subscribe to our YouTube channels, click the bell button to receive updates on future videos and interviews like this. Thank you. I'll see you in the next interview. Thank you.